for Nashville. week on Sneak Previews, our annual Oscar special, where we look at the nominees in all the major categories and give you our predictions of who will win, plus our opinions on who should win in one of the best movie years in a decade, which we're proud to celebrate on our annual show on the Academy Awards. Every year, Oscar night brings some surprises, of course, and that's sure to be true this year with Whoopi Goldberg as host. And since there are so many tight races, there could be some shocking outcomes, too. So we'll look at this year's major Oscar contenders and tell you who has the best chance in each category on this week's special show. I'm Jeffrey Lyons. And I'm Michael Medved. And first up, we look at the nominees for Best Actress, where three of these powerful performers have been nominated before, but two of them are worthy newcomers to Oscar competition. Angela Bassett is one of those newcomers nominated for her muscular performance as Tina Turner in What's Love Got to Do With It, featuring both intimate scenes and energetic production numbers. Stockard Channing is also a first-time nominee for repeating her stage role in Six Degrees of Separation. As a well-meaning upper-crust New Yorker married to art dealer Donald Sutherland, where they're both duped by a con man. Emma Thompson won the Oscar last year for Howard's End, and this time she's nominated for what may be an even more moving performance as a lonely, warm-hearted housekeeper working with head butler Anthony Hopkins in Remains of the Day. Deborah Winger also co-starred with Hopkins, this time in the superb Shadowlands, playing an American poet who gets involved in a late-in-life romance with British writer C.S. Lewis. But as strong as all these other performers are, we both think that the Oscar will go to Holly Hunter in The Piano, playing a 19th-century mail-order bride in New Zealand, mute since childhood, who insists that her new husband, Sam Neill, respect her most prized possession. Teach him how to look after it. Come, come on like this. We're a family now. We all make sacrifices and so will you. And you will teach him. And I will see to it. For me, it's very strange this year because I can't ever remember voting no on a movie and, in fact, disliking it as, as much as I did the piano and still respecting aspects of the film, particularly Holly Hunter's performance. I think far and away the best this year, hands down. A powerful performance by the end of the movie. Whether you liked it or not, and I certainly didn't like it, she carried it for me. Well, you know, I think we agreed that the piano was probably the most overrated I'll picture say. of the year, but I also admired Holly Hunter's performance, even though I would vote for Emma Thompson. I think she was even more brilliant in Remains of the Day. Holly Hunter's going to win for one very simple reason. There's a whole tradition at Oscar time, as you very well know, of honoring characters who have a, some kind of physical affliction. That's hard for actors to play. Play. Last year, Al Pacino won for playing the blind character in Scent of a Woman. Uh, Daniel Day-Lewis won for playing cerebral palsy victim Christy Brown in My Left Foot. And, of course, Dustin Hoffman, the part in Rain Man. Holly Hunter playing this mute character is right in that tradition, and she has a lock on this award. But I don't think you're giving her your due, uh, her due with that kind of reasoning. I think if that had not been true, she still would have won. So overpowering was she. By the end of the film, you didn't believe she could speak. You understood the, her, her motivations in the movie, and I think she just overpowers everybody else this year. It's that strong a portrayal. Well, again, I think they're not going to give it to Emma Thompson partially because she won last year. The other competitors here are, I think, it's a pretty weak field. I mean, frankly, Stalker Channing is excellent in Six Degrees of Separation. Yeah, but I'm surprised she was nominated. Yeah, it's it's not that dazzling a role in particular. I, I didn't like Angela Bassett and What's Love Got to Do oh, With I did. It. It's an energetic performance, but it often seems more like an impersonation than a performance. But I thought she was tremendous in a picture nobody saw, not enough people saw at least, and I hope they see it now. But that the, the, real, the real surprise here that I was very welcome, uh, found very welcome, is that Deborah Winger was nominated for Shadowlands, where I thought she was great. It's a great movie. A lot of people expected she'd get nominated for A Dangerous Woman, which is a more showy performance. Here she was much better, and I'm glad to see her in the nomination I didn't think field. anybody could be as equal to Jane Alexander to whom I saw do it on the stage, and Deborah Winger sure was terrific, but it's Holly Hunter's year. We agree on that. Now, when it comes to our next category, Best Actor, I can't think of a stronger race in recent years. Daniel Day-Lewis, a previous winner from My Left Foot, this year was riveting in, in the name of the father as an innocent man bullied by British police into confessing to an IRA bombing he didn't commit. 
Lawrence Fishburne nearly stole What's Love Got to Do With It, playing musician Ike Turner, who first nurtured, then abused his wife, singer Tina Turner, on their road to stardom. Sir Anthony Hopkins won an Oscar for playing the ultimate in barbarity in Silence of the Lambs, but he plays the ultimate in civility this year in The Remains of the Day as the loyal butler at a huge English estate 60 years ago. And Liam Neeson had the title role in Schindler's List, almost larger than life as the Nazi businessman who saved a thousand Jews from death in World War II. But Michael and I predict Tom Hanks will win the Oscar as a lawyer dying of AIDS in Philadelphia, convinced he was wrongly fired by his firm, here seeking help in a lawsuit from skeptical attorney Denzel Washington. That's not the point. From the day they hired me to the day I was fired, I served my clients consistently, thoroughly, with absolute excellence. If they hadn't fired me, that's what I'd be doing today. And they don't want to fire you for having AIDS, so in spite of your brilliance, they'd make you look incompetent, thus the mysterious lost file. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Correct. I was sabotaged. <laughs> I don't buy it, counselor. That's very disappointing. I don't see a case. I have a case. If you don't want it for personal reasons. Thank you, that's correct. I don't. Well, thank you for your time, Counselor. <clears throat> Mr. Beckett. Uh, I'm sorry about what happened to you. It's a... Boy, Tom Hanks is a marvelous actor, as he shows not only in Philadelphia, but he showed in Sleepless in Seattle earlier this year, and he showed previously in Big, and a terrific movie that too few people saw called Nothing in Common with Jackie Gleason. I remember we both liked that years ago. I think he's going to win this year, though, not just because of his excellence, but for two factors that don't really have to do with the quality of the performance. One of them is that... He was actually helped by the fact that Philadelphia wasn't nominated for Best Picture. It wasn't nominated for Best Director. So people who want to honor that film for its important message have to vote for him for Best Actor. The other thing is, there's the old weight gain, weight loss rule in Hollywood. Whenever somebody changes his physical shape for a role, like Robert De Niro gaining all that weight for Raging Bull, Tom Hanks lost 35 pounds to play the dying AIDS victim in Philadelphia. He's going to win. Well, as somebody once said, there you go again. <laughs> Looking at earlier Oscars, I think, again, if none of that was true, this is his year. He's the one everybody's talking about. He gave the most riveting portrayal, but I will not be unhappy if somehow off on the left-hand side there, Lawrence Fishburne comes in and steals it, because in a movie that not enough people saw, it's just coming out again with its nominations, What's Love Got to Do With It? He was terrific as Ike Turner, playing a real-life guy who becomes a monster, who has the difficult task as an actor of evolving into this believable character who abused his wife for no apparent reason. Well, he was so, were I, I agree with you. He was so good, I think he almost ruined the movie, because he sort of grabs the sympathy from Tina Turner and draws it to Ike Turner, who is this horrible character, at least the way he's portrayed in the film, and, and I think that undermines some of the tension in the film. But frankly, if I had to vote this time, I wouldn't vote for Fishburne, I wouldn't vote for Hanks, I'd vote for Sir Anthony Hopkins. I mean, his performance in Remains of the Day is just perfect. Every detail, every flick of the eyelid, every move of his hands just illuminates another aspect of this man's interior landscape. It is a brilliant performance, an example of great acting. I think people are going to be studying a generation from now. If it weren't for Schindler's List, I would have picked it as best picture of the year. But having mentioned Schindler's List, I think I wouldn't be surprised if Liam Neeson wins. I don't think he will. I think Tom Hanks will. But Neeson was larger than life. He was ca He's a big, tall, imposing actor anyway, representing the only hope for these people who are otherwise condemned to die in this unbelievable film. So I wouldn't be surprised if he wins, though I don't think he will. Yeah, I think it depends on how much of a groundswell there is a sweep building up for Schindler's List. I also, look, let's face it, all these guys were great. Daniel Day-Lewis, if there is an upset, I think he would be the one most likely to upset Hanks. But it's we Hanks agree that it's year. Hanks' Absolutely. year. He probably no has brainer. a lock on it. Right. All right, well, next up, we take a look at the nominees for Best Supporting Actress. And these are mostly very familiar faces to American audiences. In fact, two of them will look especially familiar to you because you've just seen those faces in the Best Actress category where they're also nominated. One of those double nominees is Holly Hunter, whose small part as a saucy secretary for a private detective in The Firm is about as different from a role on the piano as it could possibly be. Anna Paquin is an 11-year-old New Zealand native who played Holly Hunter's illegitimate daughter in The Piano and whose wonderfully expressive face managed to convey an amazing range of emotions. Rosie Perez played a plane crash survivor in the excellent but unfortunately little scene Fearless, where she's haunted by the fact that her baby, who she was holding on her lap, died in that cruel accident. 
And Emma Thompson actually had only a few key scenes in In the Name of the Father, but she certainly made the most of them, playing the ferociously passionate attorney who handles a key appeal for wrongly imprisoned Daniel Day-Lewis. But I think the Oscar will go to Winona Ryder in The Age of Innocence. Her character is superficially sweet and innocent, but underneath steely strong and cunning. Here discussing her engagement with Daniel Day-Lewis. I know you do consider it a long time. Very long. But the Chivers were engaged for a year and a half. Larry Lefferts and Gertrude were engaged for two. I'm sure Mama expects something customary. Ever since you were little, your parents let you have your way. You're almost 22. Just tell your mother what you want. I couldn't refuse her the very last thing she'd ever ask of me as a little girl. Well, can't we just strike out for ourselves, May? Shall we elope? <laughs> if you would, why not? You do love me, Newland. I'm so happy. Well, why not be happier? <laughs> I couldn't be happier, dearest. Did I tell you I showed Ellen the ring? She thought it was the most beautiful setting she ever saw. She said there was nothing like it in the Rue de la Paix. I do love you, Newland. Everything you do is so special. Well, as good as Winona Ryder was, I disagree with Michael, and instead I'm predicting Rosie Perez to win for Fearless, despite the fact that almost no one saw the movie. She gave a feisty yet tender portrayal of a guilt-ridden woman determined to get on with her life after the plane crash, and here she tells another survivor, Jeff Bridges, with whom she's formed a strong friendship, to do the same. I can't get back. Yes, you can. I don't want to. Oh, Mac. I wish I could help you, Max. We could disappear, Carla. <laughs> I can't anymore. I'm back. I want to try leaving on planet Earth for a while. You can't save everybody, Max. You've got to try taking care of yourself. I'll grant you that Rosie Perez could just win. She did a great job in an underappreciated movie, and she has going for what you might call the Marisa Tomei factor. Last year, Marisa Tomei was a surprise supporting actress winner for My Cousin Vinny, partially because people liked her feisty, earthy, sort of New York street personality, same kind of personality you have from Rosie Perez. But I think that the reason Winona's going to win is one of the same factors you had going for Tom Hanks in Philadelphia. Age of Innocence wasn't nominated for Best Picture. It wasn't nominated for Best Director. So sort of to give it some kind of recognition, people will vote for Winona, the only major nominee it got. And also, she happens to be spectacularly good in a movie in current release, Reality Bites. If a lot of people are going to see that, they're going to like her in that, and they're going to vote for her and give her the award. Remember, a lot of the Academy members only see the movies involved in the nominations. They see them at home on tape. It's a different process, and I think the fact that Age of Innocence was not nominated in other categories will work against Winona Ryder. I think Rosie Perez will win in a category that is really the, one of the weakest categories. Absolutely. You know, we've been saying it's one of the best movie years in a decade, and that's true, and people are always saying there aren't enough good roles for, for women, but some of the nominees here don't make much sense. Anna Paquin, nominated for The Piano, really surprised me when other actresses uh, older in the year deserved the nomination. Well, didn't you I, feel that way? I did, I did. I think she got nominated partially because she helped Holly Hunter. Uh, Holly Hunter didn't, uh, was a, played a mute character, I suppose. and Anna Paquin gave her good support in that, but what's was surprising here is the people who weren't nominated. I thought even in Fearless, for instance, they might better have nominated Isabella Rossellini oh, or, she was a, wonderful or an Fearless. actress named Deidre O'Donnell, who that's was right. spectacular in that movie. And Rosie O'Donnell in Sleepless in Seattle and all the people from Shortcuts. It was a year with other possibilities. Or Joy Luck Club. And, and yeah, by the, the way, if nobody you, from Joy Luck Club if, was if you look at Age of Innocence, the other person who should have been nominated was Miriam Margulies, who plays sort of the dowager yeah, she's of wonderful. New York. She's great. But let's talk about this category, and I think that Rosie Perez will win because she captures your attention. The picture found no audience, of course. But I think she just was the best thing about the picture. I didn't particularly like the picture. I like Jeff Bridges. I always do. I didn't find the picture had much point to it and made its point early and often. But I think she was terrific. Yeah, but you know, you talk about a weak category. One sign of that is when you have two fine actresses, Holly Hunter and Emma Thompson, who have so little screen time, who are both nominated. Doesn't make sense. Odd category. Well, our next category, best performance by an actor in a supporting role, may be the hardest to pick since every nominee gave a magnificent portrayal in an amazing range of characterizations. <laughs> Almost no one saw the quirky film What's Eating Gilbert Grape, but those who did won't soon forget Leonardo DiCaprio's touching portrayal of a mentally impaired Iowa teenager. 
Tommy Lee Jones was menacing and relentless, supervising the pursuit of the fugitive as a determined federal marshal, hard on the trail of his quarry, who always seemed to be just out of his grasp. John Malkovich's portrayal of a would-be presidential assassin in the movie In the Line of Fire was eerie, a terrifying psychopath, here battling wits on one of many phone calls he made to Secret Service agent Clint Eastwood. And Pete Postlethwaite was poignant and determined in, in the name of the father, trying in vain to win release of his innocent son, only to wind up in prison alongside him. But I'm picking Rafe Fiennes, another newcomer, for his chilling portrayal as the monstrous commandant of a Polish labor camp in Schindler's List. His cool disdain in the midst of human suffering made his character one of the most evil villains of all time. Which of you has um, a domestic experience? Yeah, on second thoughts, I don't really want someone else's maid. All those annoying habits I have to undo. I don't want to give him my call. Uh, what's her name? Helen Hughes. What? Helen Hughes. What? I can't hear. Helen Hughes. I'm in an awkward position here, Jeff, because I definitely think that Rafe Fiennes deserves to win. In fact, I would vote for him if I were in the Academy because I think he delivered the greatest performance by any actor, either in a leading or a supporting role in any film this year. But he's a little-known British newcomer in Hollywood, and I think the Academy voters will turn instead to a veteran insider named Tommy Lee Jones. Jones has done great work in any number of films, but he's never been better than he was in The Fugitive, where he displays brisk professionalism when he takes over the efforts to track down wrongly accused Harrison Ford, who's just escaped from the crash of the train that was taking him to prison. What I want out of each and every one of you is a hard target search of every gas station, residence, warehouse, farmhouse, hen house, outhouse, or dog house in that area. Checkpoints go up at 15 miles. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. Go get him. You know, in this odd job of predicting Oscars, you might say, when you hear somebody say, I wouldn't be surprised, it sounds like you're hedging your bets. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Tommy Lee Jones wins. Everybody's seen The Fugitive. It's a big money maker. He was very good, not even the title player. He's a popular guy Yes, in he is, and he's overdue, and he's making 19 other movies, but... Don't forget Ray Fiennes. Who ever heard of Marissa Tomei before last year's win? I think the fact that he's an outsider and an unknown made his characterization even more unforgettable. If they'd played a familiar character in that role, it just would have been an actor doing a star turn. But he was unforgettable in the role. In he Schindler's was List. absolutely superb. And if excellence has anything to do with it, he should win. So I just think too often Oscar in time. Oscar time, it doesn't. He has two things going for him, though. There, there is a an, uh, demonstrated preference in many, many different Oscar campaigns. They like British actors. He's won. They all also, we talked before about the weight gain, weight loss factor. He gained some 30 pounds to play this there role. There you go again. Right? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he has that going for him. I would be the happiest guy in town if Ray Fiennes won. But I'd be almost as happy if he won as I was unhappy that a very fine actor named Gene Hackman wasn't nominated. Well, for the firm, right? For the firm. Yeah. He was the best thing in the firm. He's How can they actor. nominate Holly Hunter for a nothing role? And he carried that movie, and he didn't get nominated here. He's my favorite actor, and since he did the firm, he's probably made nine other films, perhaps because he doesn't think he'll ever get another job again. And oh, if you're not happy with the Gene Hackman not getting a nomination <laughs> right. this year, just wait a bit. That's He'll right. do another fine That's role right. in another year. So well, he I won think, last year, yeah, of course, I think, for and If Ray Fiennes win, it'll be interesting to see his acceptance speech because it'll be so different from the character he played, thank goodness. Well, he was one of the great characters ever created but, in movies. But you know what? Everybody in this category yeah. did an incredible job. I mean, Malkovich was also one of the great movie villains, carried that movie and was a sort of strange man of a thousand faces character. It, there, there really isn't a weak performance here. And Leonardo DiCaprio, Caprio, a very talented 19-year-old yes. actor, right. was not only superb in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, a movie that neither of us cared for that much, Boy's but he was life. great in This Boy's right. Life. And so he gets certainly somebody to watch. Just at the beginning of his career, too, you're going to see some great things but, from him in the But, future. you know, I think when you see the imbalance, how much stronger the best supporting actors are than the best supporting actresses, it simply indicates how tilted unfairly things are toward men in Hollywood. Well, finally, we come to the category of Best Picture, where the five distinguished nominees this year show some of the range and the sweep and the the international element that's become so important in movies today. 
The Fugitive is the only one of the five nominees that tells a story that's set in the United States. This is an old-fashioned chase movie where director Andrew Davis handles every scene like a little masterpiece of timing, camera work, and editing. Also nominated is In the Name of the Father, which begins on the bloody streets of Belfast, then shifts to London and British courtrooms and prisons, where it tells a story like The Fugitive about a wrongly imprisoned innocent man and his often heartbreaking fight to clear his name. The Piano is the first film from New Zealand ever nominated for Best Picture. Now, both Jeffrey and I happen to think it was somewhat overrated, but it dazzled many others with intense performances and its haunting, dreamlike, poetic images. And talk about poetic images. Well, The Remains of the Day is a film of stunning visual splendor with its tragic tale of a lonely butler who misses his best chance at love. In any other year, this great movie might have won Best Picture, but 1993 will always be known as the year of Spielberg and of Schindler's List, the obvious winner for Best Picture. Here, Jewish camp inmate and accountant Ben Kingsley gives instructions to his boss and protector, Oscar Schindler. The calendar on my desk has the birthdays of our SS friends' wives and children. Don't forget to send something. The armaments board, the governor general's division of the interior and chief of police as fees. And make them on the first of each month. As opposed to individual payoffs to our SS contacts, the list is in the law drawer at my desk. Which first you... of month. SS contacts, list, law draw at my desk, which you handle as cash contributions to legitimate charities sent, of course, through each official's office. Dealings with our black market contacts, listed as suppliers in the legitimate ledger, are more it. complicated. What do you mean? Forget it. You it can't forget it. You can't forget it. Gives me a headache. Herr Director, don't let things fall apart. I work too hard. How many different ways can one describe the effect of Schindler's List? You know, from the first moment I saw it, I've been thinking about the scenes. I've become almost obsessed by it. I ran home and kissed my family. I love every minute of life in a way I never did after, before seeing that film. And people who have yet to see the film have been hearing all of this from everybody who has seen it. And I hope they can go in and have the same experience I had. It is far and away the best film of the year. It was without question the best film of the year. And it's wonderful to see that it's going to win the Oscar. It's wonderful from a lot of bases. I mean, people might say, well, it's a natural Academy Award winner. It's a historical epic. And it's three hours, almost three and a half hours long. And it's shot in black and white. Aside from all that, it's the sheer greatness of this film. This is a film that will be remembered and revered 50 years from now. And I think it's a particularly good sign. The last two Oscar winners for Best Picture were Unforgiven last year and The Silence of the Lambs the year before that. Both of them were technically brilliant, but I thought somewhat spiritually empty explorations of evil, of the seductive power the, of evil. This is a film about the seductive power of goodness. It does have how a man can right. be transformed in the midst of a tormented moment in human history. When people think of it as a movie about the Holocaust, they might say, oh, I don't want to go see that. But there is this element of hope that permeates it. If I had my druthers, I would buy a little theater in every single major American city and for five years day and night show nothing but Schindler's List for a lot of reasons Michael first of all because it's a great film because future generations should not should be told about the Holocaust but also because it has an experience on you that will last you the rest of your life I can say that about almost no other film I've ever it is seen genuinely a transforming film and we talked before about this being the year of Spielberg it's the year of Spielberg not only because of Schindler's List but he also made a little picture called Jurassic <laughs> Park that ended up being the top moneymaker of all time he's also going to win his first first ever Best Director Award. He's not to be denied this year. If they don't give it to him, then just the Oscars just don't have the meaning that they should have. I mean, it's just a hands-down no-brainer, but it'll still be fascinating to see it happen. He's so long overdue. But, you know, we talk about the Oscars and the Best Director category. There are some surprises here when you talk about people who were omitted. Uh, Robert Altman was nominated for Best Director for Shortcuts, a film that... Uh, well, you liked it. The, well, certainly. I liked it better than you did. But the, but the fact is, I mean, how could they not nominate Andrew Davis when they nominated The Fugitive for Best Picture, who did such a great job with that film? How about they the Joy Luck Club? What, what one of the great Absolutely. films of the year, totally ignored, a film that is exhilarating and, and a celebration of life and intergenerational love and well, different cultures. It didn't, it's a it didn't beautiful win film. even Shameful. one Oscar nomination. What it, where it really deserved it was the best adapted screenplay. This one by Ron Bass and Amy Tan, who wrote the original novel, didn't get nominated. And speaking Why of not? screenplays, John Guare's screenplay for his Broadway play, Six Degrees of Separation, along with Will Smith, who was great, and that Ben Kingsley, whom we saw in uh, Schindler's List, and a picture we both revered, almost genuflected in front of last May, much. <laughs> To do about nothing. I said it was might be one of the best films of the decade. We're only in 1994. I'll still say that totally overlooked. But, it's you know, a the, one process. of the problems with Much Ado About Nothing, it should have been nominated for Best Director, it seems to me probably for Best Picture. One of the problems is Emma Thompson had such a strong year. Right. She's already nominated for two Oscars. She probably deserved another nomination, uh, for I don't know for what, for Much Ado About Nothing. But the thing that was shocking to me about that film was this had one of the best 
film scores ever written by Patrick Doyle, and it wasn't nominated for best score. The most popular score of the year, in many ways, is the score to the piano which by Michael used. Nyman, right. which we used at the beginning of the Not nominated for best score. Instead, they nominated the scores for The Firm and The right. Fugitive. This is weird. And one of the finest performances of the year was overlooked because the film did not make enough money. It's called My Life with mm -hmm. Michael Keaton. It's going to come out on video any day. People should see that and savor that, too. That's one. It happens every year, particularly in the year when there were so many strong entries. But I've got to say, you've got to give credit. As this year, every single one of the major nominees at least made some sense. And, and I think there are fewer outrages, fewer idiocies than in past years. It's going to be a good Oscar show because the movies were so good. But predictability will not mean that it won't be a fun show to watch because you will finally see Steven Spielberg get his long overdue Oscar and you'll see Schindler's List uh, honored and I wonder what those acceptance speeches will be like. They will have a meaning which I uh, expect to be a little bit greater than the usual Oscar. Thank you very much and I hope everybody uh, has a peaceful life and that kind of thing. It's going to be a, a great, great evening. Well, thank you very much, and I hope you have a peaceful life, certainly. <laughs> and that's it for this week's show, where we looked at all the major nominees selected by the Motion Picture Academy as the greatest achievements of 1993. Well, please join us next time when it's our turn, where we give you our own list of the ten movies we selected as the year's bests. Now, and some of these, okay, we go along with the Academy, but on a few others, as you just heard, the selections are very different. That's our annual Best of the Year show, which also includes our eagerly awaited list of movie worsts on the next Sneak Previews. I'm Michael Medved. And I'm Jeffrey Lyons. And until next time on Sneak Previews, don't forget to save us the aisle seats. team on.